both in gardens with Renata, oh. we're potato farmers together. Um, Sean is my teammate. And uh, yeah, I'm over at Robinson Farm. I've been there uh, volunteering for about five years now. And um, I am the main man for the dairy cow milkshake, our home dairy cow. And uh, I also do the cooking there for the folks that work and live on the farm. Um, so some of the things that I ferment there are like yogurt, uh, kefir sometimes, sauerkraut kimchi, and uh, ginger beer. How, how many people do you feed over there? I know, I'm sure it's not the same every day. But... Uh, right now it is, I think, seven? seven. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 So the farm supports um, people that are actually living on the farm. So yeah. Deesa and Jeff live on the farm, and uh, Jeff is the farm manager of the farm, and Deesa soon to be, you know, heading up the farm. She's, she's going to be there full time also. Um, and then we have Ashley, who's our produce farmer at the farm, so she lives there full time. Nikki Anderson uh, lives there, but she farms at Derek Christensen's farm. Um, and right now we have a couple of folks from the ranch in Costa Rica, so we have this, uh, this relationship with this uh, ranch, ranch hospital, Rancho hospital. And um, so a lot of the people that work at that center come to come here in the fall and really help us with the building projects, a lot of the harvesting, the processing of the food uh, at the end of the year so that we can can ferment and you know go total full force um, and then that's what feeds the house, the organism throughout the winter. Yeah. How much land do you have to touch? I don't want to yeah, no, it's, we have 39 acres, but really in reality, as far as um, vegetable production, we probably farm about one to two acres to max, like actually closer to one. Um, so each year that will become a little bit more, you know, we expanded our orchard area this, this past summer. Um, we did a, yeah, we did a, a permablitz, right? They, they had a bunch of people there for a day and just put in rows and rows of raspberries and chokeberry and blackberries and peaches. Peaches, pears. Yeah. Oh. So expanding that process and every year we'll expand mm -hmm. probably a little bit more, a little bit more. Yep. Yep. So the idea is also that we'll have more and more workshops and programs around food and farming, but also around canning and fermentation and preservation part of food. Yeah. Okay, shall we get started? So the food today that we're processing, I uh, just want to give a shout out to Briggs Bounty. That's where we got the fennel and the cabbage. Nikki was uh, kind enough to bring that for us. Um, and if anyone is interested in a, you know, a good, easy to understand fermentation book, we recommend Wild Fermentation by Sandra Katz. Uh, we also have another one called The Art of Fermentation. By him as well, so we pass that on to so get it. Um, today we're going to be making sauerkraut with the fennel. Um, basically, we're you know we want to keep um, the good bacteria for us by not you know cooking the materials down or anything like that. Fermentation is a way of food preservation. Um, it's a way of keeping the good nutrients for us. We're basically you know breaking down the living substance into similar substances for us. And it's good for our digestion system. Um, yeah. It's just the good, good bacteria in our, our gut. I just read um, Michael Pollan's book. Have you guys read the new one cooked by him? He's, so that section on fermentation is so, Michael Pollan, he does such a great job of, of researching and giving all the history and really I love this, like, he sort of starts out that section on, you know, like, is this, like, these fermento, fermentos, as he calls them, people that ferment, you know, are sort of, they think it's like the end-all be-all, it's going to be like what cures you, you know, like, oh, you have type 2 diabetes, we can do you, you know, like, and all this, but then by, as he goes further and further in the research and all that, you know, he starts to do a little bit more, he's like, there, there's something to be said, you know, there's all these studies now that are coming out that are showing that um, 
a lot of our diseases that we, we suffer with, you know, whether it's cancer or heart disease or type 2 diabetes, all of these things are linked to inflammation. So that's where it sort of starts. And that eating a diet, you know, more in, with healthy bacteria, with a lactobacilli in our diets, really aids that process of eliminating inflammation and, and eliminating everything so that you, you don't go to that place that then the diseases don't start to Do this with kale or any kind of. You can. Grass. Yes. You can add in carrots. You can add in radish. Um, I usually do like trout with fennel or trout with what else I use? Sometimes caraway. Um, I've added cinnamon to it. So that's salt, not sugar. Yes. Where I've put carrots 
in here or our different things in, especially if I'm looking at kimchi, same with you. Yep. And um, you know, usually I will, if I'm making, I always chop the cabbage by hand. I don't use a food processor for it, but like if I'm making kimchi, I'll often make like a, a paste in the food processor where I put ginger and garlic and hot, hot peppers, peppers into it. TV when I was in Korea, and they just uh, they look like made it with a hot pepper paste. Yeah. They usually with, with the garlic and ginger. Yes. Yeah. Do they roll the hot pepper? They paste actually a lot of them brush each individual leaf yeah. and then yeah. roll it up and then roll them into the crocs. So there's pretty much never a dinner really at, at the farm in the winter time without the some sort Kimchi of fermented fermented, Yeah. And really, like, you know, benefit-wise, the you know, they say that you should eat fermented foods every day. It doesn't feel good when I eat fermented foods every day. Do you? The, uh, the supplements are very, very expensive, but they were saying supplements only give you billions of probiotics. Versus yeah. this, which gives you trillions of your eating food versus taking a pill. Yeah. Yeah. When I made my kefir water, I actually borrowed a microscope and I put some of the water under the microscope and I could see the actual lactobacillus chains and colonies. That's awesome. Yeah, so they're there. <laughs> yeah. I have not perfected cool. that yet. I keep killing the kefir grains. <laughs> You keep killing them? Yes, Laura, oh. he's at the farm, is hopefully going to set me straight this time around. So we have a, one of our ranch teammates are, is at the farm right now. Her name is Laura Killing Back. If you go, if you received the e-newsletter, did you get the e-newsletter that I sent out I this week? So, yes. There was an article um, in Martin Farmer with, that featured her. It was on, it was about Sandor Katz, you know, it was a feature tip, but she was a student there earlier this summer. She did a three-week oh, yes. stint with him. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's she is... That's interesting, doing three weeks with him. That's uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. quite a bit. Yeah. 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 So she... Uh, so now she's come back with lots of miso together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is quite the process. Yeah. We use black beans. Black beans, all right. Is there a certain inoculant for the miso? There was a culture that we got on a culture site. Now you can see our our style is very wide. Do you see? Like, <laughs> I just got like these little like. process and they're like, oh, this is disgusting.
what different variations that you've made, different things that you've put in? Uh, I mean, I basically just put in like carrots. I've used cinnamon, mm -hmm. um, radish. Yeah, radish is a good one. Um, different freshers. Yeah, I put in uh, one time cumin seeds, and it was actually really good. Yeah, it had a totally different taste, um, but it's delicious. And you'll put that fennel in just like that. I do, yeah. It was actually the other day. Um, and I just leave it when we pack it and store it and everything. And so the other day, I think it was Jeff eating, and then he pulled out a big piece, you know, that was in the crowd. I just leave it. It just keeps adding flavor, so. All right, then we're going to add salt. And this was roughly like eight pounds, which I think in Sandra's book it says three tablespoons for every five pounds. And I don't usually measure, I kind of just only measure the cabbage out and then I just kind of just sprinkle and mix and then taste. So Michael Pollan also talks about that whole hand paste thing, which I love, and I think he got it from a woman in Korea, right, that he was learning how to make kimchi from, and she said, you know, there's there's um you can you can follow the you know okay x number of pounds to x number of of uh, to x tablespoons of salt or whatever but that you've got to get the right the hand taste right the right feeling you've got to as you start to do what Sean's doing and working it you'll start to feel the breakdown of the cellulose you know so it starts to release its water you know and that's what the salt does it, you know. And if you look at it, you can see the water actually yeah. coming out of the yeah. cabbage. Yeah, it starts to get better and better feeling. Well, I have trouble because I use coarse salt, but most, I think the recipes are often fine salt. Fine sea salt. salt. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, come and take a look at it now. You can see it. Come on in and take a look at it while he's doing this, because you can actually see it releasing the water. Oh, wow. Salt then, like, what's that? Salt you use? You're supposed to use like fine sea salt. Fine sea yeah, salt. Yeah, sea salt okay. though. Have you tried the pink Himalayan salt? I have no. not. I okay. use it. I use that very often when like I steamed vegetables or on salads. I'll do the, the Himalayan salt. I like it a lot, but I haven't used it in this. Okay. Again, it's really the finer, I think, the better. Because yeah. um, it doesn't, otherwise, it can get really yeah. salty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? yeah. So, salt, yeah. you want to sort of have a. Just <laughs> stuff. Just 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 stuff. The crowd when you pack it into the food grade container and we weigh it down with a plate and then I use a stone on top or a weighted jar. And then if, uh, which it can take like, you know, a day or two for the brine to come up. Um, but if you want to just put it in the brine, you can make a brine with water and a mason jar and some salt and then add that in and then cover it that way as well. And then, um, I'll cover it today with a plate, but when I bring it back to the farm, I might change uh, the, and then the cover on top, but I'm, I'll change the cover probably to like a piece of fabric and then use a rubber band. So a couple of things. You definitely, when you make your crowd, like you said, if you, usually when I um, do it at home, so again, us on a small scale, right, I've got glass jars that I use. And so you do this for quite a while. You can even let it sit for a little bit because it will release more water. Um, and then when you go ahead and you pack it in, I pack it in, like I take handfuls and I'll put it in the jar. And then I pack it down with my fist, you know, so that you're really getting into it, packing it down. And then that, of course, is releasing more water. So once you get to the top, and you're going to want to leave a little bit of room because there more water is going to form in the, in the few, first few days. Um, so, but you want it to be submerged because that's where, if it's not submerged, that's where mold can form, right? So if it stays underneath that brine, 
that I've never had mold form. You have before, and Sandra talks about that that's really fine because it can be a really good kraut mix or a kimchi mix underneath it. You just, you know, scoop it out and get it off. Um, it kind of, I mean, those are the things that freak you out a little bit, right? There's the whole, like, you're like, which one's, you know, what's the good bacteria, what's the bad bacteria, how can I tell, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you obviously, you can tell because it will smell rotten, it will look black or, you know, like a really funky green or, um, but if you, if you find, like what I'll do also at home is I, I have stones that I've cleaned that I use um, on top or, you know, maybe a dish or something. And for those first couple of days, I kind of just go and keep making sure, like I push down on that rock to just keep bringing the water up and over it. You know, and then it stops, like after the first few days, that bubbling, fermenting action stops, and, and it depends on the heat. So if you're making a kraut in the middle of summer, it's really hot, versus in the winter, it will take longer, it will take shorter in the heat. Um, but then you can just let it sit and really, because then it gets nice and hot. Yeah. Sure. Folks, want to try some? Um, for me it is, I don't know, I mean, everybody is different, yeah. some people like more salty, mm -hmm. but for me, that's a good amount of salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to taste the salt, like yeah. yeah, I think I'm yeah. using the wrong size salt. Yeah, so it's not, it's not the thing as much, yeah. yeah. We wanted to be able to send you all home with containers of this, oh. but that's not allowed. Like yeah. we, we don't have the right license to allow us to do that. Um, so, so you can see some of the liquid that's, that's come right. off. Yeah, quite a bit. Right. The main thing is to work it. You gotta. <laughs> yeah. It's like making bread, right? Yeah, it's like that kneading it and getting your hands into it. You talk, you know, the, you, the more you read about fermenting, you know, it's funny because it's like talk, it talks about like different, you know, like bacteria that come off of our own body, which is great. It's fine, you know, and and that our society has gone so far in these last hundred years in the opposite direction of anti-bacterializing everything that you know it's it's not you know then all of a sudden you're seeing increased allergies and asthma and all these different factors. Um, but it's talking about like even with bread. I think he talked a little bit about how you know you, we bring our bodies and our environment brings different bacteria to our to our food. You know it's why having a you know local honey can help with allergies because that's what's in your environment. You know doing. Do you want to remove any of this stuff? I'm sorry. Would you like to remove any of this stuff? I think we're gonna we'll compost that. So yeah. I was not yeah. wanting to just throw like, like, it. We're always thinking about the pigs on the farm. Yeah, we like sure. to bring our compost. Yeah. The, the poor chickens. And the chickens. The chickens <laughs> get a lot of tomatoes this week. The chickens get we well love taken that. care we of. That. We can't wait to have the um, the squashes and the pumpkins. Do you have a bunch of the, um, what's the kind of squash that you have? Is it, no, no the turnips. Oh, um, we things? planted some a little late. Actually, they're coming up in the the uh, Hellfan Farm community garden, but we don't have the big field that we planted last year. Uh, yeah. It's too much work to get it cleared and keep it's, it weeded. Uh, the container. Yes. Uh, I know there's different containers. Some have BPA. Do you have to get a non BPA or any special container. Yeah. Grade safe container. Yeah. Where do you get grade? This one I got at a, a restaurant store in Fall River. Oh, but I you might be able to find them online too. Sometimes I'll yeah. use on Craigslist. I like an like industrial bucket I got at Lowe's has buckets, five gallon buckets that are food grade. Oh, oh okay. Lowe's. You go to Lowe's, yeah. Okay. And depending on the size, so I have a couple of big glass yeah. jars that are like this yes. that I use when okay. I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a great, we wanted so badly to go to this, for, there's a fermenting festival next weekend in Boston, <laughs> Boston Ferments, and so we had it on our calendar since like what, January, and then our 
friend is getting married at the farm, oh, so, yeah. so we're yeah. not going to be able to go. But if you go online, to there is a guy that's going to be there, and they're selling crop containers and stuff, and they they look like such they handmade crop, you know, a ceramic crop. Um, so they don't have any air, and they've got like a, a seal. Yep, they've got the right seal, and yeah. they've got like stones. So if you go online, start looking this stuff up, I mean, you can you can spend as much money as you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is it bad to use um, what might be considered a reactive container, like stainless or aluminum? Do you want to stay away from the metals? I think it is. Yeah, okay. um, and they get like. Uh, with the fermenting process, what I've noticed with some like metal even on around the edges is it gets kind of that like weird tinny, weird smell. So like I think it's better to use things that are like either like a BPA free container and then or glass or yeah. Has anyone tried ceramic? Because some of those big ceramic large tubs are ceramic okay, are perfect, great. perfect yep, size. Perfect. I use a ceramic liner of an old crock pot, which yep. I wouldn't be using anyway. So yeah. Those work well. The person that I was men mentioning, the guy that hand makes these crocs, that look, they're so pretty. Did we look at them together? They're really beautiful. Um, he is going to be at that festival. <laughs> <laughs> so if you Next look <laughs> at the bucket, you can see, you know, the brine is forming at the bottom, and ultimately, eventually, it'll come to the top. Hopefully, in the next day. Or so, and what I'll do, I packed it in with my fist. Is that I'll take this plate and I'll use that as a cover, and then I'll weigh it down with a rock. And then, usually, what I'll do is I'll put a piece of fabric over the top um, and just hold it in place with a rubber band, and then I'll leave it hopefully somewhere where I'm going to uh, be able to take a peek at it every couple of days to see how it's doing. If, you know, if it doesn't have enough brine to cover the cabbage, then in like a day or so, then I'll make a brine and I'll just pour it over like a cup. I think in the book it says a, a tablespoon per quart of water um, of salt and then I'll just shake it up in a mason jar until it's dissolved and then add that over it. And then if there's any mold that forms, I'll just skim it off the top. and. Um, check it every few days and taste it and hopefully in, I don't know, at this time of the year. How often do you get mold enters? When not you often. Them? Yeah. Yeah, not so. often. If it's under the brine, it's, you know, one of the other things that I've read is that when you put it in, so if you don't have like a rock or like the whole weighting down I found has been kind of challenging. Um, so one of the things that he recommends is that you can take like even like a like a baggie or something, you know, make like a brine and then put that in there and then use that as the weight, like a, a brine solution in a baggie, and then that way if it like pops or something, you're it's just got the brine solution in it anyway, but it's it's enough to weight it down. Um, yeah, you're using a baggie, but uh, yeah, I think that that's sort of a, the challenge sometimes in the smaller size is to get big enough, small enough, you know, that they can be effective to weigh it down. And usually at the farm we make kraut in big batches, like, I don't know, 50, yeah, like 60 pounds. Um, I don't know, we probably go through a little over 100 pounds, I'd say, to get us through from the fall to beginning of the spring. Well, and you keep it uh, at room temperature after it's done, or are you going to put yep. it in the refrigerator? Room at room temperature, and then once it's uh, done, you know, when it's ready to harvest, we'll pull it out. We'll usually put it in a crock, yeah. and then put it in the refrigerator. So when you're ready to, like, if I had a jar and made it all uh, September, could I do that at room temperature indefinitely, or like you said, wait till it's done? You give it like eight days and then put it in the refrigerator. Or? Um, I've taken things out. I haven't left it that long. I mean, I've left things still to ferment. Um, so you can leave up it to a couple time. months at okay. least, sometimes even longer. But once you open it, it, then then you have to put it in the refrigerator, I'm guessing. Uh, Not necessarily. No. I mean, we've left kimchi out oh, yeah. for a while, but you can tell over time if it rots or not. We've had batches that have yes. gone bad that have gone to the chickens. They'll yes. get mushy. Yeah. So and usually, you know, you can tell too. Um, 
with Crout sometimes you'll see like two tone color. Yes. Yes. Um, so you know something that you taste if you don't if you want it more crunchy like the top tends to be a lot softer. I, find. I don't know if you found that. Mm -hmm. It's really experimenting and seeing yeah. what your what you like um, and how you like it because some people like it more salty, less salty. You know some people want to you know you can do it with a lot less salt and, and it can still ferment and still get the benefits of the lactobacilli and the, um, but then also yeah definitely how long you let it let it be once you once you put it into you know once it ferments I think that that's it I, I think once you put it in the refrigerator it stops the fermentation process so those large so batches you refrigerate them once they're we, finished we, we do but they but you know, there's only so much refrigeration space, so a lot right. of them just stay in yeah, room temperature. And room temperature, yeah, until we're ready to use that next batch. So like, I have a batch at home right now, right. right? That I'm doing at home, and I'll just I'll leave that right. fermenting until you know until the batch that I have in the refrigerator is done. And often what I'll do is I'll try to like like this past time when I made a batch, I'll use the end of like the the previous the batch, the brine, because you've already, it's like a starter, you know, you've got like that starter culture right there, so it just, yeah, kind of like when you made a kombucha. Right? And you can drink it too, I mean, that, so uh, you know, it's good for our health tonic, they say, so, don't let it go to waste. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't drink the crow one, usually it tends to be a little too salty for me to drink, but I will drink the kimchi. ideas like if we were to make this at home what um, could we serve it with besides like I think of sauerkraut I think of hot dogs eggs. honestly right yeah our favorite I think is with eggs yeah and really like, yeah it's like my favorite time so you have the eggs like you have it on the side of the eggs or you like actually mix it in with the eggs the side, like, of the eggs. side. yeah I was reading too what happens is uh, sauerkraut that's where the beans were in sauce I think is this 
incredible shape. So it's been sort of like, you know, I love the, um, I love the kimchi spice and heat and hot peppers and garlic and ginger flavor, but I don't necessarily like like a traditional kimchi that's got like the fish sauce taste, like when it's a little fishy, it's yeah. not my favorite. Yeah, we've, we've had some we, we tried to do a little fish yeah. sauce before at the farm and yeah, not as good for us. Just, yeah, I think people, you, you know, some other people love it, but it's just, I like the freshness of, of the flavor without the, the fishy. Highly recommend this book. The other uh, book by Sandra that's really good is *The Art of Fermentation*, and that's a little bit more like this is more recipe oriented, and *The Art of Fermentation* is a little bit more gives you it still gives recipes, and, but it more in a narrative sort of way. So there's much more narration in that one, the history and you know vessels and different different things in the other book. But they're both great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.